Hello, it's Tom with Digital Foundry, giving you a quick look at The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine on console. First question then, with a revised engine in play for this new expansion, what does this mean for PS4 and Xbox One performance and graphics quality? CD Projekt Red states this expansion is better optimized, thanks to texture and geometry assets being packaged in a more memory efficient way. Well, yeah, normal. This should in theory equate to better console performance overall while also maximizing its visual impact. Now we already know this new Toussaint region looks incredible on PC, barring some occasional pop-in. But let's look at the PS4 version by comparison to see how close it gets to PC's best settings. To start, this is an overview of the main city on PS4, but moving to PC you'll notice shadow draw distances are much broader. PS4 retains some key shadows from terrain itself, but from this distance PC adds more shadows from trees and building arches. In this sense, it's a very similar technical setup to the base game. PS4 runs at the usual 1080p, while on PC here we have it running at 4K down sample to 1080p. Meanwhile, Xbox One continues to run mostly at 900p. The good news is, this area looks gorgeous on both consoles either way. Xbox One's results are blurrier owing to its lower native resolution, but texture quality up close is broadly a match for PC's top setting. As for console performance, well we'd hope to not see a repeat of the crookback bog area in the base game, where both consoles slip below the 30fps target. Thankfully the Blood and Wine expansion's first two hours play really well at a near locked 30fps, however as we get closer to the big city, Xbox One does fall noticeably short of PS4. Both consoles have a single massive hiccup as we approach the castle, likely due to asset streaming. but it's Xbox One that regularly drops frames across this run, putting it at 28 FPS compared to the sturdier 30 on PS4. Likewise, in an earlier battle with the Skurva enemies for example, Xbox One also struggles as we land each blow, and it does feel a touch more sluggish to control overall. That gets us to a low of 26 FPS at worst on Xbox One, and though PS4 has its own drops in this case, they aren't quite as severe. But overall, these are two of the worst spots we've found so far, and the rest is business as usual. You'll encounter the odd stutter during travel, but the game sticks to 30 FPS on each console more consistently than the base game. With each patch to The Witcher 3, and now this latest expansion, it's clear CD Projekt Red is adapting to the capabilities of both consoles, and slowly getting a better handle on the balance between visuals and frame rate. As the last foreseeable entry in The Witcher 3 series, it's a good note to end on, and a positive sign for how its future Cyberpunk 2077 project will end up playing on PS4 and Xbox One. Anyway, that's all for now. Do like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and until next time, thanks for watching. Yeah.